Hi everyone, it's great to see you. I'm gonna be doing some potting up of this hydrangea today and I wanted to show you what I'm doing because this is the hydrangea that I propagated from a cutting three seasons ago. So it's been in this little pot for quite a while, overwintered in here. It bloomed beautifully. You can tell that the leaves are starting to get their fall color. If you notice that the leaves of your hydrangeas are starting to turn maybe a little brown, maybe a little red, maybe a little yellow, that's just what they do. And this particular one is gonna get kind of that yellowish bronze color to it. So don't worry, it's not a bad thing for your hydrangea. But looking at this hydrangea, each year I have added in some annuals. I have some licorice plant here. I have some verbena over here to sort of fill it in because this has been a pretty small hydrangea. And now I get to the end of season three and I can say, this is no longer a small hydrangea. So I am going to take it out and give it its own grow bag now. The reason I'm doing that is so that it has a little bit more space, that it's not in competition. When I look at the top of this, it is like one big rooty mass. And I really want the hydrangea to continue to do well. But this is rooted from, this is propagated from the purple one that I have in my yard that I know only blooms in old wood and it doesn't flower well every year depending on how cold it is. So I want this one to be in the grow bag so I can continue to move it into the shed and I always get some beautiful purple blossoms that way. So let's see what we can do with this. The first thing, when you have something like this that you're, you feel needs to be changed is to get the whole math out, including those annuals that are in here. And sometimes when you do that, it's really tricky. Like they've been in here a long time. You can sort of roll or stomp. It depends if you want to keep the pot or not. I stomp on those that I don't want to keep that I can break, but I like this pot. So I'm just going to sort of roll it around a little bit and press on it to loosen those uh, roots from the side. I'm also taking out any of the stakes that I had in here. And then we sort of hope for the best. There is a good chance I'm gonna lose part of this, whether it's one of the annuals or part of the hydrangea breaks off. Like that's just how it goes. But because long-term for the health of the hydrangea, I need to do this. Even if I break part of the hydrangea so it can't bloom as well next year, it's worth it in the long run. So I'm gonna take this then and sort of wiggle it. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. That is exactly what you hope to have happen. Whew. Did we get that on camera? I hope because it never works that well for me. But you can see like this is really rooted together. It's ready for some space. Now you have a choice. If you are wicked strong and wicked lucky, you probably can pull this apart by hand but I think I'm gonna go and get the root slayer. No, oh, hold it, I might speak too soon. It doesn't seem to be too bad so far. The root slayer, a shovel, your hands, whatever you are doing, I'm gonna go get the shovel. You wanna cut off the hydrangea piece here. Okay, give me a second. So this is not the root slayer shovel, this is the root slayer edger, but because it has that nice sharp edge and the serration there, it should work really well. I have the main stems of my hydrangea on this side of the root ball. So I'm gonna try to just separate it right down the middle here. And this is where you sort of have to just do the best you can it might not be perfect. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. We're almost through it here. Oh, we're gonna have to come from the other direction. It's a lot like separating hostas when we did that before. You sort of just have to close your eyes and be, be really brave. Okay. 
So now, uh, this piece here, uh, there we go. This is the verbena. So it actually is looking really good. I'm thinking that I can use this in another planter. This looks like it is one of the African daisies and the licorice plant. Not doing great, but I could cut this back, probably get some more blossoms and another planter for that. Let's see what else we have. And this is what I'm talking about, how you're gonna get some casualties. Like you just don't even worry about this. Some of it came off, but it's not bad. Then I have my big piece here. So primarily it is the hydrangea. We have one annual stuck on here. This looks like it is some type of calibrachoa. Looking really good though. Let me put that in something. Okay, let's get to the hydrangea. A few weeds down the bottom. Uh, this looks like it's part of an annual here, and I don't want that. So I'm going to sort of cut that off. But it's kind of close, so I'm not going to go all the way through, just a bit. There we go. Let's see how that worked. Yep, there we go. That looks like it's another piece of the verbena. So some of this, I'm not sure how much of the roots are leftover roots from the annuals and how much is the hydrangea i'm going to keep as much together as i can the worst thing that happens is some of these grow back some of the annuals but i don't think that'll happen this looks pretty good okay I have already put in some watered potting mix here. So this potting mix had been sitting in the shed for quite a while. It was really dry. If that happens, you do want to moisten it before you add anything else in here. And you can tell, I mean, this, is, this isn't a bad size root ball, but it's not going to fill up the whole piece here, this whole bag. So that's kind of good. It's going to give it some space to expand. I'm going to nestle it in. And I want it to come up pretty much to the top of the grow bag and I want it as centered as I can. And that can be kind of tricky because coming from that other planter, it was growing on one side more than the other. So it's going to be hard to get it to look really straight. Hopefully I can sort of um, make it work better next year as it comes up. I'm gonna put potting mix here. Okay. Now you can add some Biotone starter fertilizer. I actually just ran out with the last project. So for now, I'm just going to put in some potting mix. Remember, if you don't have Biotone starter fertilizer, you can always add that later. Or you can give it a little Osmico in the top, some type of time release fertilizer like that is fine. We're towards the end of the season now. My goal is not to have the hydrangea put on tons of new leaves. I just want it to grow some good roots here in its new little happy environment before all the leaves fall off and it gets its winter dormancy period. Okay. Oh, I think I'm just going to have enough potting mix. Yay. I feel like at the end of the season, we're using everything up. It's like the last of the fertilizer went in, the last of the potting mix. But in a way, that's good because I don't want to have too much left over. I always end up using more potting mix than I think I'm going to. Okay, the hydrangea is attacking me. A little straighter. There we go. When my hydrangea are small like that, when I've propagated them, I really like to put other things in with them. It sort of just makes it, you know, look less sad than just this little tiny hydrangea. But at this point, this is what you, the size you'd be buying in the store. So it should be just fine on its own. Look at that. Okay, so 
this is just going to go in the garden like this. I'm going to keep it watered and then I'll wait until December 1st um, when the leaves should have defoliated from a hard frost and then it goes into the shed and I keep it there through the winter till May 1st. So let's go find a place for it in the garden right over here. I'm using back by the deck, sort of behind the daylilies that I have cut back as a hydrangea holding place for some of these that are being potted up now. They're not center stage. They're not really doing that much, but they give a little bit of the green leaves here. And this allows me to have my grow bags that are in planters somewhere else, have something more fallish that's currently in bloom, but they're getting plenty of sun. I make sure they get plenty of water. They're still happy and it still adds that green piece to the garden. So I'm really happy with this and I'll go find some other place to put the other things that were in that planter, but we should be good. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.